Space, the final frontier. It's very, very, very big. We know this because there are galaxies that are hundreds of millions of light years away. This brings us to the question of the day. How do we measure the great distances of space? Thanks to her contribution, I can tell you how it's done. By her, I'm referring to Henrietta Leavitt. In the early 1900s, Levitt was working at the Harvard College Observatory. She was working as one of the computers whose job was to measure and catalog the brightness of stars. You heard right. She was not working with one of the computers, but she was working as one of the computers. Before the advent of electronic computers, people whose primary job was to perform complex mathematical calculations were called computers because, well, they compute. That's fair enough for me. So Levitt's job was to measure and catalog the brightness of stars as they appear in the observatory's photographic plate collection. In case you don't know, these plates are the predecessor of photographic film. They are rigid and not exactly portable. Images from a telescope was recorded on these plates at various times. Levitt's job at that time was to study variable stars. These are stars whose brightness, as we observe them from Earth, changes over time. They're not twinkling stars. Don't, don't get that confused. Levitt found thousands of variable stars and images of the Magellanic Clouds. By the way, these Magellanic Clouds are actually galaxies. They were called clouds because they looked fuzzy in the early days before powerful telescopes and before we had solid evidence of other galaxies besides our own galaxy. Among the variable stars that Levitt found, she noticed that a pattern existed in some of them. The brighter stars appear to have longer periods. That is, the brighter the star, the slower the brightness changes, or the lower the frequency. She later refined her work looking at data from Cepheid variables. they are variable stars whose diameter and temperature, among other things, changes periodically. She confirmed that there was a relationship between the period of these types of variable stars and their brightness. Now here comes the hot part. Yeah, that was a cheesy pun, but uh, anyway. With the knowledge of this relationship, it's possible to determine the distance of a star. And it goes a little something like this. Since we know the relationship between the brightness and period of a separate variable star, if we know the period, then we can determine how bright the star is, if we were next to it. This is the actual brightness of the star, or its intrinsic brightness as it's called. Now. Compare that value with how bright the star actually looks from Earth, and we can determine its distance. That's because the brightness of an object decreases at a well-defined rate. By the way, the rate at which the brightness decreases is called the inverse square law. Check me out later for more info. Anyway, since we can detect the period of a variable star fairly accurately based on Levitt's discovery, we now can determine the distance fairly accurately also. This relationship is now called Levitt's Law. Well, I saw that coming. I hope you did. To use the law accurately, you'd have to, of course, take into account things like dust that could diminish the star's brightness. The period luminosity relationship for separate variables made them the first standard candle in astronomy. A standard candle is an astronomical object whose intrinsic brightness is very well known has nothing, nothing to do with an actual candle. Do not ask for them on your next romantic dinner date. The standard candle allows scientists to compute the distances to galaxies if they can detect a Cepheid variable within them. Galaxies that are too far to be measured with the best method at the time could now be measured. Now, that's far out. Yeah, I had to say that. One year after Levitt reported her result, Ina Hexpon determined the distance of several Cepheids in the Milky Way, and with this calibration, the distance to any Cepheid could be accurately determined. Because the distance to other galaxies could also be determined, they became an important part of the evidence that they were independent galaxies located far outside our own Milky Way. Thus, Levitt's discovery would forever change our picture of the universe. This prompted Edwin Hubble, you know, the guy whose name is on that famous telescope to move our galaxy from the center of the universe. 
Knowing the distances to galaxies far away also gave Hubble important data for him to determine that our universe is actually expanding, a critical part of our understanding of the cosmos today, a very important contribution to the human knowledge base. Hats off to Henrietta Leavitt. you always be remembered in my book. Thanks for watching and remembering the giants that Sir Isaac Newton talked about. Subscribe and help me find more giants that were lost in the past. It's only a matter of time.